All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are reviewing the Ingwe M20. I mean, look at this thing. It's a dual battery, full suspension e-bike, or is it an electric moped? Well, I can't figure it out yet. So today we are gonna find out. We have a lot to do, so let's get into it. The Engwe M20 is a class two e-bike, which means you can reach speeds up to 20 miles an hour via the three levels of pedal assist. It does have a cadence sensor, or you can use your full throttle to get you up to 20 miles an hour. So this is not a quarter throttle. The whole thing is a throttle. The Engwe M20 can be unlocked to take you up to 28 miles an hour. The M20 comes in three different colors. You can get it in green, white, or black, which is the version I have here. The M20 comes in one size, but two different configurations. You can get the single battery 13 amp hour version for only $1,149. Or you can purchase this double battery version, which I have here, which is 26 amp hours and only $1,449. All right, real quick. If you are watching this in the month of November, from November 1st through November 30th, Inway is having their Black Friday sale all month long. That means you can get the 26 amp hour dual battery version for only $1,199, or you can get the single battery 13 amp version for only $999. If you end up getting the double battery version of this bike, well, I've seen before in the past where people have had to like totally attach this whole second battery and get into the controller and everything like that. But when this bike came to me, all of that was already done. All I had to do was attach the handlebars, the front wheel, and the front fender, headlights, and I was good to go. So that'll save you a huge part of trying to figure out this whole second battery configuration. This bike will also come with four go fast battery stickers if you wanna pimp out your ride a little bit. I like this classic look, so we won't be needing these. Now to me, it looks like Enway decided to take the Super 73, craze that's been going on and making their own version of it, a cheaper version, one that also has more features like this full suspension. Now, Engway says that the single battery version of this bike will get 34.17 miles using throttle only or 47 miles keeping the bike on pedal assist level one. Well, I guess that means that the dual battery version should be able to double that. They also say that the M20 can handle up to a 10 degree climbing angle. Well, we'll be testing that out today. The double battery version of this bike weighs 104 pounds and the single battery version weighs 94 pounds. The maximum payload capacity of the M20 is 264.5 pounds. It has a 750 watt brushless rear hub motor. It has a thousand watt peak and 55 Newton meters of torque. It comes with a very basic Shimano seven speed transmission with a Shimano tourney derailleur. It does have a derailleur guard and the standard Shimano thumb shifter. For stopping power, the M20 uses a non-branded mechanical disc brake system. It also has 160 millimeter rotors on the front and rear. For the front suspension, you have a dual crown setup. It is spring loaded, not hydraulic. You have 152 millimeters of travel and it does have a compression setting on the right hand side so you can adjust how much dampening you get from the front end. The rear shock is an HLT 100. It's oil filled and it has no adjustability. The max weight on that is 750 pounds. This bike features 20 inch mag wheels with 20 by four inch Chow Yang puncture resistant tires with an aggressive mountain bike tread. The batteries on the M20, well, they're UL certified. So that's an important thing to get out of the way right out of the gate. They are 48 volt, 13 amp hours with 624 watt hours per battery. So when you take this battery plus this battery, well, that gives you over 1200 watt hours of consistent power. You can charge the batteries while they're on the bike. A charging port is right here, but there is also a USB port right here on each one of these batteries to charge your devices. These batteries run independently of each other or they can run together. And what that means is you can just have one battery on, drain it, ride the battery till the battery's drained, go ahead and flip the switch, turn the second battery on, and that gives you double the range. Or you can have them both turned on and it will just keep bouncing between the two batteries until both batteries are drained in full. 
This bike comes with a two amp hour charger. So if you take a look at two amps going into 13 amp hours, well, you're gonna take about seven hours per battery to get a full charge. You can also check the battery level of each battery by pushing this button. As you can see, we have red, yellow, and three greens. Taking the battery off the bikes is pretty easy. You're just gonna put your key in here and you're going to turn it forward. That releases it and you're just gonna push it out and pull it off. To put it back in, well, you just click it back in, relock it, and you're good to go. Each battery has its own key. One of the things that I'm really digging about this bike is this dual headlight system. I'm really liking these LEDs that they have down at the bottom. These are adjustable individually, and when you turn on the headlights, well, it just even gives you that much more light during your ride. Check out how bright the tail light is on this bike. Now, this is brighter than any of the e-bikes that I have reviewed in the past, and so when you hit these brakes, I mean, people are definitely gonna see that. The M20 is 65.7 inches in length and has a standover height of 30 inches. Now I am 5'9 with a 32 inch inseam. I fit on this bike very easily and I feel like I'm sitting up pretty high compared to some of the other bikes that are shaped like this that I've reviewed before in the past. So I am pretty excited because I think this is gonna be a pretty comfortable ride. Cockpit operations. On your left hand side here, you have your grip. It is a harder type rubber and it has a pretty good tread on it right here. Here is your front brake lever. You have your headlight and an electric horn. To turn the bike on, well, first you have to start off by hitting the battery to turn one of those on, and then you're gonna hit this button up here, which your screen comes on, and it looks really good in my opinion. I do like how it has this battery indicator level right here. You can see your speed pretty well. I mean, this is black and white, but I do have a feeling that it's going to show up really good, even in bright sunlight. You have your pedal assist level. It's showing you how many miles are on the bike. If you just touch this at the top, it'll give you your overall odometer, your max speed, your average speed, and your trip distance. To set your three different pedal assist levels, well, there's a button here and a button right next to it. This is your plus button. As you can see, it takes you into the one, two, three levels of pedal assist. And if you hit the button next to it, it's gonna drop you down in pedal assist levels. On your right-hand side, you have another grip, but this is not just a grip. This is actually your throttle. It's a full twist throttle. So as you can see, the whole thing turns. Then you have your rear brake lever. Right here is your shifter. You push in this button to go up in gear and you hit that lever to go down in gear. I am super impressed with this Enway manual because it shows you all the different settings that you can do very easily to, number one, I put it in miles per hour instead of kilometers. I set it for 25 amps instead of 20 because it says it can handle it. And I also set it to class three speeds. Now that we've gone through all of the specs, it's time to take it out on the road, but unfortunately it is about to rain on me right here and it's supposed to rain tomorrow. So now I have to wait two days before I can get her out on the road. It is two days later and I gotta tell you what, the weather has changed, <laughs> definitely changed. It is 36 degrees, uh, it says it feels like 27. I believe it, I believe it, but one of the great things is I have my uh, helmet by Exnito which has that uh, that cold weather liner in it. And yeah, that is a that is definitely a game changer. You know, this becomes a, like one of my, well, it's like my only hat that I wear, my only helmet that I wear in the wintertime because of this warm weather liner, unless I'm having to wear a full face helmet for some reason. And when that happens, well, then I just have to find, uh, then I have to wear a bakalava to keep my head warm. So right now I wanted to show you guys what it was like to ride it with no power but this derailleur on this is messed up. So I'm gonna run it over here to the bike lane so they can adjust it for me because I kept switching gears, but then it just kept bouncing through all kinds of gears. And it's great to have that access. Look, whenever you guys put a bike together, it is always good to take it to like a local bike shop and make sure they can like fine tune it for you. And that's what, uh, and that's what we're gonna do right here. Right, we didn't test the horn out in, uh, but this is it. All right, I have earmuffs on, <laughs> but it seems like it's loud enough. All right, we're checking the speedometer out. As you can see on the left-hand side here where the display is, it's showing 26 miles an hour, and it's also showing that on the display, so on the speedometer. So we are tracking and we are correct on our speeds. Now, I don't expect to get <laughs> near the range that I normally would on this bike because of this cold weather. 
If you don't know, batteries in cold weather do not mix. Yeah, they'll still work, but you're definitely gonna lose some range. And we're gonna find out how short of a range that we're gonna be able to, well, how long of a range in this cold weather that we're gonna be able to go. Now, like always, I'm using Strava to track the ride today to ensure that we get an accurate reading on mileage. I do have to say that so far, the power is smooth. Although when you turn the throttle back, like it doesn't take off really quick. You're just gonna have a little bit of, ooh, okay. You're gonna have a little bit of, it just, it just, it's not that there's a delay, it just takes off slowly. I am here at the bike lane to go ahead and get this bike adjusted so that we can continue on with the review. It kept shifting gears, it like kick, it wouldn't stay in a, it wouldn't stay in a yeah, gear. So it was, it's like the cable stretched or like settled in. So I just dialed it back to where it Oh, be. you think, so you think you already fixed it? All right, we're good, thank you. All right, my friends from the bike lane got me uh, squared away. We are good to go. Everything is shifted nicely. Now that we got that fixed, I have the bike in zero pedal assist and we are in gear three. This, I mean, even though this bike does sit up higher than other of the like cafe bikes that I have tested, it is still pretty, pretty low. I mean, I'm 5'9 and my knees are coming up to above the, where the battery is on this bike. Now you can sit back a little bit, make it a little bit easier on you, but this is not one of those bikes that you wanna ride just like a normal bike. Matter of fact, I don't even think they had that as part of the plan. This is definitely one of those bikes that you just ride like a moped. All right, let's go ahead and put it in pedal assist one. Here we go, see how that feels. Oh, there it goes, it kicks in, wow. So I had to crank it like three or four full rotations before I felt it kick in. In gear four, look, three, four, five, almost okay. That was like five rotations. Pedal assist one, you can comfortably cruise at about 14 miles an hour. I mean, I wouldn't say comfortably because pedaling on this bike is not the easiest. 17 miles an hour is in pedal assist number two. We're in pedal assist level three. I'm gonna put it in gear seven and see what our normal cruising speed is. 20 miles an hour. Now remember, I have unlocked this bike to do class three speeds. As you saw when we were throttling earlier, we were at about 25, 26 miles an hour. That was the fastest we were going. So that's what you can expect out of this bike. Let's put it on pedal assist number four. This is, these little buttons are super tiny, not the easiest to hit when you're wearing gloves. But I think normally you would just put it in one gear and just roll with it. Okay, here we go. In pedal assist number four, gear seven, 23 miles an hour be your top speed. Let's go ahead and try pedal assist number five. 25 miles is gonna be the best. You're gonna get out of this thing. <sighs> okay. <laughs> we are going to do the throttle test, see how long it takes us to get all the way up to full speed. Hit the button, there we go. Like I said, the throttle takes off a little bit slow, but you do feel very controlled when you do it. Right there, 25 miles an hour. And I was just checking to see if we were gonna hit 26, but nope, 25 is gonna be the max. Now you're probably wondering, I am not going to do the zero to 20 pedaling this bike. It's really not what it's made for. You know it, I know it, Ingwe knows it. So yeah, <laughs> that's not something you wanna do. We are going to do the brake test. I'm just trying to get as much space as I can because uh, this bike takes a while to get cranked up to speed. And so I moved my little, my little starter point a little farther down, hoping that I can pick up all the speed that I need. Right now we're at 23, 24. Woo, she slid sideways, 29 feet. All right, let's give that another shot. I saw where I was at 24 miles an hour, not exactly 25. So we're gonna try to see if I can maybe back up a little bit, make sure no cars are coming. Hopefully I can get up to 25, but Definitely, when I hit the brakes, that back end definitely slid. Okay, here we go. We just needed a little bit more. There were no cars coming. I know somebody's gonna talk to me about rolling through a stop, stop sign. I got it, yeah, I know. No cars were coming though. Let's go, let's go. 26, 25, 25 miles. All right, we're at 25. Just gonna let the throttle take it from here. And here we go. Whew, 28. I feel like these brakes are still underpowered. You know, mechanical, 160 millimeter rotors. I feel that any bike that can do over 20 miles an hour should 
have hydraulic brakes on them. But the bike stopped. It felt safe, no issues. You know, one thing I noticed is you have to put your hand in front of the headlights to see if they're on because there's no indication over here on the display whether your headlights are on. So that's kind of a kind of a bummer. My headlights have been on, didn't realize it, and I'm trying to like, you know, save as much battery power as I can. Not saying that that would draw a lot, but just every bit's gonna help in this colder weather. So far, I have to admit that the uh, seating position on this bike is actually rather nice. I've heard where some people complain about the seat. Some say it's good, some say it's not. Some say that you slide down into the battery. That has not been the case for me, but I'm also 5'9". I was wondering if this throttle was gonna be hard to keep uh, held back. It is not, because normally you get hand fatigue if, it, uh, if, it doesn't, if the spring's too hard on it, but this one seems to be just fine. I mean, this, <laughs> this thing is fun. This is a good time as long as you're not pedaling it. Right now, I just have one of the batteries on. I wanna to try to take it out, see how far I can go, and then use the other battery to get me back. So I'm really not making use of the 25 amps that we bumped it up to, but I just need to make sure that I can make it home without having to pedal this bike very far. Uh, right, here's where we cut across the, well, I was glad that truck stopped. We are going to hit our little off-road section here and see how it does its full suspension. Yeah, we're doing fine. <laughs> uh, now i mean this is this is fun i would not take a bike like this on a mountain bike trail uh i just don't think that would be a good idea let's go wheel oh yeah oh this bike's pretty solid right i mean the metal the fenders are metal which i didn't mention before and i barely heard uh any rattling from them at all if anything uh oh we're down to one bar uh, we've gone eight miles, 8.22 miles, and we're down to one bar on our first battery. So I'm gonna end up switching them for this hill climb so that I can get all the power out of it, but eight miles. I mean, it is cold, guys. It is 36 degrees. They say because of the wind chill, it feels like 27. I mean, what are you gonna do? Somebody's gotta test these bikes in the cold weather, and I guess it'll be me. Actually, let's see what happens when we flip the other switch. See if it changes any in the uh, in the display. I don't know if you guys can even see this. I have turned on the other battery. Waiting for the display to uh, notice it. But it has not. So I've turned on the second battery. It's still showing that there's only one bar. Let me turn that one off and see what happens. All right, so I turned off the battery I was initially using, which was the bottom battery and it's showing that we only still have one bar so let's turn off both the bike will turn off we turn the battery back on turn the bike back on and see if it shows that i have yeah and now it shows that we have full battery again okay so just note that if you're doing that you're going to have to like shut the bike down switch it over for it to read or at least it might do it you know we'll test that out here in a little bit to see if it will end up picking it up and showing the new speed. So let's let's go ahead and knock this hill test out and then we'll we'll play around with that. All right, let's knock out the brake test. Here we go. We have it in oh well, let's get it in pedal assist number five. And let's see if it's gonna make it up this hill. I'm not very optimistic. Here we go. Oh, Oh, it hasn't given up though. It hasn't given up. It hasn't given up. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, this is clearly over a 10 degree uh, hill, but this, he doesn't want to give up. It's still trying. I'm trying to help it. I'm trying to help it. We're still going. And then we just have this little part right here. We're catching up. Uh, 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 we're so close. We're so close. <laughs> yeah, we did it. We did it. <laughs> this is that thing gave everything that it had to make it up this hill now i'm going to try pedaling it up the hill we're going to kick it down into some gears here back up a little bit oh i know it's going to shift the gear part here we go yep it shifted it shifted okay now let's see how easy it should be easy now oh yeah like i you know you just give it a little bit of assistance and yeah, and it'll make it right up the hill. Easy peasy. 
Oh yeah, the fenders are rattling a little bit. I probably just need to tighten them down, no big deal. I ended up going back to the original battery and at first it had bounced up to like four bars again and now we're back down to two. So my goal is to ride the first battery until it just puts out, until it's just done and then we'll switch to the other one. Although I am wondering, let me get it back here on the trail and we will take a look and see if I feel any more power, any additional power coming out of it when I have both batteries going because at that point I should have 26 amps instead of the 13 that I have right now. Okay, I went ahead and I switched and added the additional battery. So I turned that battery on and my power jumped up to four bars. Let's see if I get any, like if the bike goes any faster, if I feel anything different from this new setting. Having the other battery going as well, so having the dual battery mode going, well, it gets us an additional mile in speed at least that's what that's showing me right there. Maybe two. Look, we're at 27. About, so it's right at the top edge of 26, bouncing between 26 and 27. So you'll go two miles an hour more when you're using two batteries at the same time. I have to tell you, this bike rides pretty smooth. I don't see me having to do uh, any seat upgrades or anything like that, like I've seen other people do. Although we're only one battery into it. We'll see how it is at the end. So now I was curious, now that I have it in dual battery mode, will it hit top speed faster than it did before? Now we're gonna stop it at 25 miles an hour because that's what I did on the last test. But let's see if this is gonna be any quicker uh, getting up to top speed with the dual batteries turned on. Let's go. Right there's 25. And yes, it will get you to the top speed higher. Okay, I've just had lunch, we took a break here. And let's see where we're at battery wise. We're still on that first battery, just double checking. Yeah, it shows that we are back up to four bars again. I don't expect that to last very long. So uh, yeah, let's start heading to, uh, to the lake shore and see how much juice we can get out of this battery. We have made it out here to Lakeshore Drive and I have to tell you, it is a beautiful day. It's a cold day but it's a beautiful day out here in Chicago. Now we still have one bar of battery left on the original battery that I'm trying before I switch out. And Strava says that we've gone 17.37 miles. My goal is to take that original battery all the way to the end and then we'll switch it out. So let's continue on and see how it does. This bike, since it's only 65 inches long, is very nimble. This thing is 100% a pleasure to ride. Now our max speed seems to be 20 miles an hour at this point. I do have the throttle all the way back and we have it in pedal assist number five. When it comes to the battery indicator, when you're almost out of battery, the battery indicator itself will start flashing. So we no longer have one bar, we just have a flashing battery symbol. We're still doing 17, 18 miles an hour with the flashing battery, so that's, that's pretty good. All right, guys, we're kind of creeping at like 13 miles an hour. I'm gonna go ahead and kick on the second battery. I wanna see how it shows up. Oh, immediately I felt power right when I kicked it on. We're climbing again. Although the battery indicator doesn't read it yet, it will here in a second or it should. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the bike off and then turn it back on and see what our battery indicator is. Oh man, that makes me feel a lot better. All right, let's, let's get going. I put it in pedal assist one because I wanna see if it locks out at a certain speed because I think it probably would and it has. So pedal assist number one throttle only gets you 14 miles an hour. Let's kick it up into pedal, well here this is a, a hill, but we're gonna kick it into pedal assist number two. So pedal assist number two has us cruising at 18 miles an hour. Let's see what three does. So pedal assist number three, full throttle, 21 miles an hour. Pedal assist number four has us cruising at 24 miles an hour. Pedal assist number five should take us up to 25 miles an hour since we're using one battery. Now we have already dropped down two bars, so we only have three bars left. I'm gonna turn around. I don't wanna get stuck out here in the cold trying to pedal this 105 pound bike. We are heading back. We have already, I, I just told you that we had three bars and now we dropped down to two and I just turned around. I am awfully far from home. I need this bike to make it. We might have to kick it down into like pedal assist three or something like that to get that extra out of this battery, but we're not gonna do it until we get down to one bar. 
Now these gloves are really good in like temperatures of 35 degrees and over, but this wind chill is just freezing my hands. So luckily I brought my heated gloves with me just in case, because I didn't know. So we're gonna switch into those and warm these little fingers up. These heated gloves definitely make a difference. And I will go ahead and put links down to like all the things that keep me warm while riding here in Chicago in the winter time in the uh, in the description so you guys can uh, see so you guys can find them now we have it in pedal assist number three i'm down to two bars and i'm trying to get close to the house but i have to admit i am enjoying this bike more than what i thought i would to be honest i you know by looking at the way the seat was and seeing other reviews i'm like oh this thing's not going to be that great and for me it is totally fine i'm not feeling any part of this seat at all now i have noticed that by hitting these bumps that this back suspension is very basic and i have seen some people that have switched out the shocks in the back and i would totally do that as an upgrade to this bike so there's two upgrades i would do i would do the rear shock and i would do uh the brakes and put hydraulic brakes on this bike if you did that man this thing is set this thing is golden and for the price of this bike you could do it relatively cheap we are now down to one bar so i figured i would stop real quick and see where we're at we're at 21.61 miles one bar of battery left so let's see how far this bar is going to get us because we still have at least a good i don't know five six miles to make it home all right i've made it to uh the 606 trail we still have one battery going right now. I did put it back into pedal assist number five so I can uh, keep my speed up while heading back. Plus I know I'm kind of close to home. We have dropped down to 22 miles an hour consistently with one bar left. One thing I forgot to mention about this bike is that the, when the other battery was draining, I didn't feel like any pulsing or anything like that coming from the bike, which is awesome. Instead, it just was giving me full, you know, as much power as it could, the lower that it got. We are down to seven miles an hour, six miles an hour. Yeah, this bike, this bike is done. All right, guys, we made it back. Now, Strava said that we went 35.45 miles before we basically ran out of both of these batteries. Now, I want you to keep in mind that the high was 36 today, and it said it felt like, because of the wind chill, 27 degrees. I have really enjoyed reviewing this bike today. Actually, this is a really good bike if it comes to one that you don't want to pedal. I mean, I had a lot of fun with this thing and there was really only a couple things that I would change with it. As I mentioned before, I would put hydraulic brakes on this bike and I would also change out this rear shock. And I think if you change those two things out, you're gonna have one heck of a good time. I dig the look of it. I dig the headlights. I like that headlight double feature. I like how bright this backlight is. Oh, and you can actually get a rack from Ingway that attaches onto the back of this. They didn't send me one, but just so you know, if you want to put a rack on the back of this bike that you actually could. Now, if you are interested in this bike or any of the accessories that I had on it or whatever type of clothing that I have to keep me warm, well, I'm gonna put all those links in the description below. Now, don't forget, if you are watching this in the month of November, Ingway is having a massive Black Friday sale. It's running all through the month of November. You can save big money on this bike and big money on all of Ingway bikes. So all you have to do is click on that link below. I'm gonna take you right to where you need to be to see what those specials are. Well, that covers my review on the Ingway M20. I wanna thank you for watching and until I see you again, enjoy the ride.